All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Barbara Rosgoni, who is in lovely Charlotte, North Carolina. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing great. It's a little hot here. I just moved from Chicago in late May. So it's really interesting to think about digital branding and moving your digital brand and how does that work? You know? yeah. so a lot of new perspectives here, but thank you so much for having me on this interview. I love talking to salespeople and it's just wonderful to have this opportunity. Excellent. And, and Barbara, is, as you can tell, she's an online marketing PR expert, expert in social media, digital branding, all those good things. And what we wanted to talk today uh, about was about building your digital brand, particularly as a salesperson. Because um, let's face it, Barbara, when you talk about building your digital brand as a salesperson, most people think that that just means, you know, fixing your LinkedIn profile a little bit, right? Well, that's a good place to start, but it does go way, way mm. beyond that. And that's why I, I, you know, I like the term branding, but I really think people need to focus on their own PR. And I'm redefining PR as personality plus reputation. Mm. So really that to me, that kind of summarizes what branding is. It's your personality and then your reputation for you. And then also the people you want to reach. So I think that gives people a better mindset because branding is kind of a fuzzy term. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about that? So it's your average salesperson. I mean, okay, so maybe the younger ones coming into the into the um, workforce maybe don't have such a struggle with this because, let's face it, they've been <laughs> they've been digitally branding themselves for a long time. Exactly. But for people maybe who are not digital natives, maybe a little bit older, this whole idea of of you know representing your personality mm -hmm. um, online, it's it, they don't really know where to start, or it seems a little you know eh, it seems a little strange to them. It does. It really does. They're very uncomfortable. And when I work with sales teams and I train them, you can tell some of the most successful people in the room are the most uncomfortable people in the room about thinking about what they're going to put online. And unfortunately, what you see happen is they have a presence that's a shadow of who they really are. And the problem is when people decide they're going to do business with you, especially in B2B. And by the way, I didn't know this until I did some research. B2B buying decisions are much more emotional than B2C. I mean, you might think, oh, you know, well, we're going to go get a cup of coffee. No, really, there's a lot that, that's riding on this decision. So it's imperative that as a salesperson, you have a good digital brand that people can resonate with. They really need to know who you are. And that's where the confidence factor comes in. You know, I feel like people aren't really as confident. In, and as a society, you know, we're told don't brag about who you are. And everyone knows like there are, you know, you might have a friend or somebody in your family that talks about how great they are. And so they're hesitant to do that. But what can help these folks is if the company has a program that helps get them comfortable. And not only that, has consistent messaging. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the biggest fall off is storytelling. And once people have the story about their, themselves and their product, and they really can lead in, in in a manner that resonates with people, then they get it. Yeah, and and I totally agree with you on the on the B two B buying being emotion, um, you know, a lot of emotion uh, being built into it. Because if you think about it, like I always say, is if I make a consumer purchasing decision, right, the worst thing that can probably happen to me is I buy something stupid and my wife gets very upset with me because the money could have gone elsewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> in in B, We've all done that. yeah, in. In, in a B2B, if I'm making a business buying decision or I'm part of that or I'm the, the ultimate decision maker, that can be career enhancing. It can be career limiting if I make the wrong decision. So there's a lot riding on it. Um, so I, I, I agree with that piece. And and I think that's to your point about the bragging. But I think if you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, when you look for somebody, you want you want your salesperson to be the best because you want them to be somebody who you go, yes. This person is really good. They've obviously done a lot of great things. They must be representing a good product. They're going to be able to help me. So it's very comforting to see that what some people might think is, is bragging. Well, your confidence rubs off on them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I like to think of it. You know, people are looking to know that they made the right decision. And sometimes, you know, you can think about it yourself. If you've dealt with someone who's confident, they know what you want. They give you the right solution. It's almost all said and done before you really ask any questions. You just know that they have the right idea for you. And that's what salespeople are. They're guides to help you get to that right decision or the next level. 
But it's funny, like you said, that, uh, I mean, most salespeople, if you talk one on one with them or or they're in a they're in a meeting setting or whatever, you know, storytelling is something that usually comes pretty naturally to them or something that uh, right. that they've developed over time. But telling stories through digital means is something that's much tougher for them. But it's still kind of the same. It's still the same skill set. They just have to transfer it, right? Exactly. And, you know, when, there are all different levels to tell stories on digital. It could be video. It could be images. It could be words, quotes. Um, it could even be if people are researching you and they want to see what you've been doing on LinkedIn, it could even be what you're commenting on. Mm -hmm. Because whether you like it or not, you're leaving a trail of clues that really tell people what your digital footprint looks like. They can ID you even if you cannot. You know, mm -hmm. so It's really important to be mindful of, of what you're doing. So if you were, if you, say starting with LinkedIn, if you're a salesperson today and you go back and you take a look at your LinkedIn profile, what are some of the, th the things you should be looking for? What are some of the cues that you're either getting it right or getting it wrong? Well, you know, it's great you asked that question because I have a big fat personal branding checklist with 42 different points I work with because I know I put it together. I'm like, wait, this has got to be too much, but it's really not. I mean, when you start and this probably should be even more, but really one of the very first things, and it's so simple is what's your picture? What's it mm -hmm. look like? And profile pictures are important. It used to be more like it was a studio portrait, but now, you know, they want to see who you are. So I think that would be good to really think about that. Uh, having a good headline. And I think one thing too, that's kind of fun is what hashtags do you follow? Mm. Because you don't know who's watching you. And mm -hmm. if it could be your location, it could be your industry. Uh, maybe you love AI and you love artificial intelligence, or you like AR, which is augmented reality. Those are two really hot, cool techie hashtags. So if you start following them, you'll get the news around those. And if people are looking for a salesperson who's really got a technical angle to them and you have that in your portfolio and your profile you're going to resonate with them so it's interesting what you said about the 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 picture just go back for a moment you're saying so it's moving away from the the portrait headshot to more of a, a realistic is it or what do you yeah think? yeah i would think so because you know there are you can get a post portrait and that's fine but you don't want to look like um a cardboard cutout, you know, mm -hmm. you want to look confident, capable, relaxed and happy. And if you look at when I do presentations, I show different pictures and, and probably one of my favorite ones is I had a friend who said they always talked about this guy that they knew Ron and you know, a great guy. And I said, well, pull up their LinkedIn profile. So they pull it up and I started laughing and they said, why are you laughing? And I said, I've never seen a bronze dog as a LinkedIn profile picture before. You know? <laughs> so people do everything. But as important as that profile picture is, you also have the billboard. Mm -hmm. behind. You. Yeah. So if you want to use a tool like Canva, which is C-A-N-V-A, -A, yeah. you can create a billboard behind you. And it could just be like, I know I worked with a physician and she's a wonderful woman, but she wanted something that made people who saw her profile feel very comfortable and positive. So we found one with the sun that just, it's really funny because it goes right behind her profile picture and it's like she's wearing a halo, <laughs> but it looks beautiful. It looks very natural. So, you know, think about that full effect. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. And yeah, I would highly recommend Canva to people. I've been using it for a long time and it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, that that uh, that banner behind you, it's so much real estate because they force so much real estate onto your profile for that. They that do. it's. Yeah that you might as well use it. And and also, and you don't have to be, as you said, I mean, you can, you can do decent stuff without being a graphic designer, or you can just go and ask the people in marketing to do it for you. But it, um, it's far better. I mean, you stand out far much, far better than just leaving it as a generic one. Exactly. And if you, if you work for a company that has a sales team and you can even switch those banners out, like if you have a campaign mm -hmm. or going to a trade show, you can do a special one for the folks that are going to be on the floor, you know, so you've got a lot of options here to really use it as a promo space. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and then, um, so a lot of salespeople will kind of push back on the whole, you know, Twitter or Instagram, or yeah. they say, <laughs> you know, I don't really have time for this. And it doesn't right. really bring me anything anyway. Uh, so what do you say to, to people who what should you leverage? Um, and if you're going to leverage it, how should you? Well, I agree that you don't want to waste time. I know mm -hmm. salespeople are busy people, and I'm sure there's enough that they have to do. Uh, 
beyond their regular job of keeping in touch with clients. So why do you want to add anything else to the mix? Well, with Twitter, even if you don't want to be active on Twitter, it's great for research. It's really, really an exciting place to be. And even if it's like the biggest time saver, if you want to see what's going on in the world, all you have to do is pull up Twitter. If you want to pull up a client's town, like say they're in Charlotte or Indianapolis, you can pull that up, see what the trending stories are. Yeah, you could do that on Google too, but Twitter is almost like a news Google. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And if you like sports and you want to see what's happening with sports, I tell people to use it as even like um, a personal enrichment tool, because then that way, if you have a client who really loves a team or something, you can say, did you see this? And you can follow the different, like if you like F1, you can follow the driver. So that's all personal side. But on the business side, if you want to follow hashtags or follow companies, one really sneaky way to do it is to follow what your competitors are doing. Mm. So if you have like five top competitors, they're going to start announcing what's new and what's coming out. And Twitter is a great place. And if you want to see what their customer service is like, go to Twitter because people are going to be talking mm. about what they love and what they don't like. So, you know, it's kind of like working inside the company on Twitter. Yeah. So I, I think that was a great piece of advice. So to anybody who's listening, so not to see Twitter as just something that you need to be, you know, posting, you know, 20 times a day on, but it's actually a tool that you can leverage as a, as a good research tool, as a good information, information tool. One of the things, though, um, Barbara, that has that obviously frustrates most people on LinkedIn is the amount of salespeople who still use this as a let me reach out to you and if you accept my invite i just hit you immediately with a sales pitch well what what do you say to people who are still falling into that trap stop (laughs) (laughs) Stop. uh it's ridiculous i mean you get it especially if you open the message on your phone and they're Mm -hmm. four or five hundred words who's going to read it nobody cares So looking back at my sales days, and I won't go into my whole history, but let me tell you, I was the worst salesperson in the world. I've been fired once. I quit, tried to quit once. And then I went on, led the company, became a national sales trainer. So I've been there. I know you really want to talk to people. But the real key is to have the list of people you want to do business with. And if you really want to get their attention, do something simple like say, hey, I'm doing a survey on what's happening in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. What trends do you see? If you have a minute, could you just take a second to go give us your answer and then send them a copy. So make it value add, value add, value add. So they're like, oh, hey, that John guy, he was the one who came up with that survey. So you really want to position yourself as a partner, a collaborator, not somebody who's pushing stuff on him. Because if you're like me, you know, they they keep some of these people just keep coming back and back and back. Mm-hmm. You just want to block them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, especially I love when they say, Oh, just in case you didn't get the last one or, Oh, I don't, I don't want to fall to the, I don't want to fall to the bottom of your list or, and you're thinking, okay, I haven't answered your last three. Um, you know, maybe you want to, maybe you want to mix up your approach here a little bit and you're right. correct. Um, but it's become it, it to me, it, it has to certainly diminished in some way LinkedIn because it is it is like my inbox gets filled with sometimes I I can't even find messages of relevance because I have all these other ones right. that are just pitches. So if you really want to get someone's attention and you have that list of like the top 20, like my very first job was selling leads with Dun and Bradstreet. So everybody mm-hmm. got like 20, 25 leads a week and we taught them how to work them. So if you have 20 leads a week and you find these people on LinkedIn, you go to their profile you like what they posted or you share something that they've posted, you're going to get their attention like that. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's going to work much better and much quicker. You do that two or three times, you're going to get a lot farther than you ever would of sending a canned message. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it shows that exactly it shows, at least uh, it shows the other person, you know, some interest that you're putting a little bit of effort into it because otherwise you just know that you're just one of like 500 people they email that day and I hope in a spray and pray effort. Yeah, I wonder, I just would love to know what the open rate is on those in yeah. response, right? Like, <laughs> exactly. So is there, is there any other, um, are there any other social media tools? And um, for instance, I mean, people have, I mean, Instagram has been around for a long time, obviously, but mm-hmm. it seems to be gaining more and more traction as a business tool today. I mean, are there tools like that that people should consider using? Or is that something that's good for certain areas and not for others? Well, I think it really comes down to a couple of things. If you're an independent contractor, that's one 
one end of the scale, but if you're working for a company that has employee advocacy programs, they would probably love it if you would share what they already have out there. And th so that would be a natural way to really share and just be involved with what's going on and you don't have to create. But I think people get caught up in, oh, what am I going to create? And I have a strategy for that. It's a wired strategy. It's pretty easy, but you don't even have to do that. If you find channels and people that you really like, you can like and comment on what they have. And so, for example, over on Instagram, if one of the easiest way to do it is if you're going to an event or even if you're not even at the event, you can follow that hashtag, like what's coming through the stream, and it gives you an idea of what's really happening there. You can go behind the scenes, which is an easy strategy to use. And if you love taking pictures, you can get involved on Instagram. Just watch what's in, you know, I'm on Instagram. And I love it. But I always wonder, like, you know. What like what do people see when you put things up? You know, you can get too carried away if you have a cute dog or a cute baby. That's fine. But is there something else in your life? And for business, there should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's great advice. And I think uh, overall, if I'm um, if I'm trying to pull together the strands of what you're saying is basically you don't have to just go all in on all of these platforms and be posting. Right, you can you can you you can use them all strategically uh, and exactly. you. And you can pick and choose which ones you use um, for what, obviously. Well, and the simple way to do it is go where your people are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like if you're going fishing, even if you just want to go to the aquarium and look at fish, you probably mm -hmm. want to go to a place that has a lot of fish that are the kind you want. You know, like the, we went to the Atlanta Aquarium. They've got everything over there, you know. But if you wanted to go see the river otters, you had to go to a certain spot, you know. So if your people are not on Instagram – then and you're wasting a lot of time over there and you're having a blast that's great if that's like your personal <laughs> fun channel you know like if you like to ride motorcycles or whatever you do on the weekends awesome but if you really want to use it for business go where your people are and linkedin is probably the best place for you to spend your time yeah and so we're bumping up against the end of our time here but that's a perfect way to to round out the conversation is exactly go where your target uh, customers are. So if your target customers aren't on Instagram, yeah, probably don't want to spend a lot of time there, as you say, great for your hobby. Um, mm -hmm. But certainly, certainly LinkedIn, like look at your profile picture, look at your background heading, look at your, and, and one last thing just to ask you about, you know, your, your, your headline, um, what should you be looking for? What should you be looking to put in your headline? For LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. Well, this could be a longer conversation because sure. I love to talk about SEO, but it, it's really fascinating. Sometimes I'll work with people and I know I worked with one person for two hours. We only changed like three words, but it just like opened up all, just like the floodgates. And I know it's so it's interesting. I would recommend experimenting, I guess mm -hmm. is really my best advice I could give you. And look at when you do a search for whoever it is, like if you know your top salesperson competition, usually you do. So if you know that Megan is the leader, look at her profile and see what does she have on there. Don't copy yet. Mm -hmm. But just see if certain search terms pop up. So, for instance, I'm a speaker. So when I look, if I want to do any kind of competitive analysis, I'll see what people are using and what our meeting planners using. The other thing you can do is LinkedIn gives you insights into who's searching for you and what keywords they're using to find you. So if they're looking for like executive admin and you're uh, a premier salesperson, that's wrong, you know, and that wouldn't happen anyway. Mm -hmm. But there are clues you can use, but you can change it up by season too, you know, but the, the basics would be your industry, how you help people. So who you are, uh, what you do and how you help people. And that's a lot to squeeze into like 160 characters. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's a great point is go and look at what uh, what the best people are doing. OK, Barbara, before we go, just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you and the services you offer. OK, great. Yeah, I, I just love to help people figure out how to get from here to there. And I talk about taking the either the scenic route or the cinch route. So I'm all about the cinch route. So if you look at Google Maps, the fastest way, that's what I do for you. And I have a blog called Wired PR Works. That's W-I-R-D-P-R-Works.com. And if anyone is interested in that in that checklist, it's at RadiantReputations.com, RadiantReputations.com. You can sign up there or find me on LinkedIn. It's R-O-Z-G-O-N-Y-I. It's Hungarian. And let's talk. I, I do have free consultations. I love questions. So even if you just want to check in and say, what do you think? Believe me, I can always tell you what I think. So. <laughs> Just just uh, if you go find Barbara on LinkedIn, just don't send a sales pitch, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want me to critique it, I yeah. think I have to do it. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. Listen, Barbara, it's been fascinating. Hopefully you come back and talk again, because as I said, there's probably things we can get deeper into. Um, Again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.